The National Rifle Association has been around for well over a century. But did you know that its roots as one of the most powerful political organizations in the country can be traced to right here in Cincinnati? It was May the 21st, 1977 at the convention center when Harlan Carter, a hardliner against gun control legislation, along with a group of reformists, staged a coup within the organization, an event known historically as the Revolt at Cincinnati. Since then, the NRA's mission has been to defend Second Amendment rights at all costs. Its lobby, widely recognized as one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, in all of Washington. Now, there may be no better example of the NRA's influence than in April of this year when members of Congress voted to defeat Senate Bill 649, the Public Safety and Second Amendment Protection Rights Act, which would have expanded existing background checks to include gun shows and online sales. The bipartisan legislation, authored by Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Republican Senator Pat Toomey of Pennsylvania, was designed in part to make it more difficult for the mentally ill to get their hands on firearms. The day it was defeated, an angry President Obama publicly accused the NRA's lobby of, quote, willfully lying about the bill. Obama's frustration also directed at members of his own party who voted against it. So what makes the NRA so powerful? The answer might be as simple as following the money. According to the Sunlight Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to increasing transparency in government, 88% of Republicans in the 113th Congress have received a contribution from the NRA at some point in their careers, along with 11% of Democrats. The NRA targets key members of Congress for contributions, and that includes Democratic Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid and House Republican Pete Sessions. He is the chairman of the House Rules Committee, which determines the legislation that goes to the floor for a vote. The gun lobby spends money both nationally and locally. This summer, the NRA donated more than $361,000 to the recall effort against two Colorado state senators who were instrumental in passing strict new gun control measures. The senators were voted out of office earlier this month. Now, there's no way to know whether Senate Bill 649 might have made it more difficult for Washington Navy Yard shooter Aaron Alexis to obtain the weapons he used to murder 12 people in cold blood and wound several others. And it is impossible to predict whether the bill might have prevented other shooters with established histories of mental illness from getting their hands on guns. However, one thing seems to be certain. The chances of a similar bill being passed anytime soon are slim to none. Asked this week whether he would reintroduce legislation expanding background checks to gun shows and online retailers, Senator Joe Manchin said no. The reason? He doesn't have the votes.